CO2 excite is about converting carbon dioxide into usable chemicals. ISSP is really involved in many parts in this project. Our tasks are quite multiple. The micro researchers, battery signers and etc. are working on alternative catalyst layer. ISSP also is involved with developing the catalyst, so uh, the catalyst on which the reaction happens. Uniquely in ISSP we are developing the uh, graphene sheet stacks on which the uh, copper catalyst and gun then live. So it's sort of like two catalysts assembly. We are creating uh, carbon materials, which is mostly graphene in this case, or graphene uh, sheet stacks, and we're trying to improve uh, the cathode properties. Why graphene? Uh, well, it's a really useful material, and it's useful in a way that it can transmit a lot more electrons without losses than just carbon coating, <laughs> right? And it's inert enough that it it uh, does not corrode, right? So you get many benefits with using graphene. Our main goal is to create cathode electrodes. These electrodes should be as efficient as possible in the creation of uh, ethylene from uh, carbon dioxide. At this point, copper is the best solution. For that, we need to have it on a gas diffusion electrode. Now, the question is how to apply metal onto, well, in this case, gas diffusion uh, electrode, which is carbon paper. And one of the ways is, well, to grow the uh, copper on uh, onto the surface. Then we have microcrystals or nanocrystals, and you can calculate easily how many folds we have, how many magnitudes of order we have for higher surface area in comparison to, let's say, a flat surface. Then we have colleagues in the laboratory who are calculating, doing uh, uh, calculations uh, from first principles. And, and uh, how many electrons basically you need to get the reaction going? What they are doing is make uh, theoretical calculations how process of catalysis proceeds. So in our model, we do not calculate the whole the catalyst, which is quite large, is 10 by 10 centimeters. We model just a small part of it in the size of nanometers. And from our simulations, we can understand how the reaction takes place, what are the prerequisites for, for the reactions, how it it influence on the electronic structures and materials, how it uh, will behave thermodynamically and under the um, real working conditions. And then uh, the third big part is, well, the creation of the membranes, the ion conducting membranes that will again increase the productivity of the overall cell. The procedure is quite simple. It is a polymer solution in an organic uh, solvent. It is quite concentrated. We can actually spread it thinly on the glass plate. So now I just put it like that. And also try to minimize uh, our losses. And afterwards we use this tool Yes, this is the famous one. And slowly and carefully we make ourselves a little membrane. When we make composite membranes, it is very important to know uh, these proper properties of these additives that we introduce into the membranes. When the membrane is prepared, we should find out how suitable is it for a specific carbon dioxide reduction cell. 
what's the diffusion coefficient for osmosis process? We got osmosis cell? No, because there is a concentration gradient. The water will flow through the membrane to the chamber where the salt is dissolved. We measure conductivity. As we design a new cells and so this previous information is not enough. So we should look again for those, let's say, classical methods and try to apply them and find a new way for them. That's, that's science. <laughs> I suppose it's only very, very small pieces, but if you are doing and somebody more and more, then it's coming bigger and bigger and maybe... Uh, if you replace some of these processes with, processes with uh, CO2 uh, converted into ethylene and then converted into plastics, then yes, you would say you could displace part of the need for oil and become more sustainable.